Hey Alexis Love Beauties and Flawless Men, today we're going to speak about hands and feet. The title of this video says for women, men, and children because this is safe for anyone to do at any age. So let's just talk about the hands for a minute. The hands and the feet goes through the most pressure and I mean just everything every single day you have to use your hands and you most definitely have to use your feet because you're walking around so when you're constantly using your hands and using your feet you begin to get calluses on your skin now calluses are not a bad thing until they're a bad thing calluses actually form on the skin to protect the skin from becoming damaged so say i'm picking up this bottle of apple cider vinegar every single day eventually my hands is going to try to protect me by the calluses forming so calluses is just layers of dead skin but if you allow calluses to stay on your body for a very long time then they can become infectious and they can cause pain so we don't want that to happen so i have this card here our hands and feet are so important to the body because our hands and feet, it controls our internal organs. Even though your hands and your skin is your external organ, your different parts of your hands and your feet controls your internal organs. So imagine having your stomach in the palm of your hand, but you have a callus that's right there. That will begin to cause problems with your hand or possibly even your stomach. Now I know you probably like this, that's a stretch, um, this is called neuropathy. Um, I believe I said that word right. <laughs> and so what happens is this is really the inside of your body from the outside. So if you have, you know, this is where your lungs and your breasts are, different parts of your body. So on your hands and your feet, you can get calluses from the top to the bottom. And eventually, if those calluses become infectious, then they will cause issues on the inside. A lot of the times we always wonder, well, you know, I just got a cut on the outside, so I don't understand now how my blood is infected. That's on the inside. Everything that we put on the outside, it goes and to the inside we are human and our lord largest organ on our body is the skin so anything you put into the skin when it goes into the body it contaminates the blood first so anything on the outside can and will affect the inside so if you have calluses that's sitting there as a protective coat eventually you need to remove those callus or they will begin to you know cause other problems and pain and that's not what we want the reason why I stopped wearing press on nails is because first of all, you know, God told me a natural beauty, the way that, you know, he's doing this is different. Um, so I can't wear nails anymore. I stopped wearing the nails. Anyway, um, I had went and got a full set of nails and then I closed my hand in the door and my fingernail, like my supervisor had to rip off my whole fingernail. It was nothing back here but flesh and that was nasty and it was scary. After that, I began to wear press-ons. I was getting custom press-ons, but then I was doing the press-ons so much, just like me knowing how to do my own hair, I was doing my hair and nails every single week. What happened was I began to strip the, the power in my nails. So my nails got really, really thin, really, really fragile. You know how we like to get our nails done and we like to cut the cuticles so they can look clean? Well, I learned something about cutting those cuticles. Your cuticle, when it grows over that white hump that you see, really your cuticle is protecting your body from infection. Like everything tries to help out. It's your immune system. So your immune system is on the inside, but still on the outside, different things happen. And this is how these things happen. This is what I'm saying. So on the inside, your immune system is the part of your organs that fight disease. So if you're cutting your, um, if you're cutting off your cuticles, then what your immune system is going to do is try to fight whatever bacteria tries to get into your fingers. So this is why your cuticles grow. What your immune system is doing is trying to prevent infection and disease getting into your body. So the body on the inside is saying, hold on, like it's been too rough right here for too long. I'm going to make a callus here. 
Um, so your body fights for you on the inside and on the outside. So this is why it's best to learn about the internal and the external beauty. So I stopped cutting off my cuticles because I was like, well, if I'm cutting off the cuticles, it is easier for you to get infection because that's open. A lot of the times you might cut the cuticles off and they bleed. And if you go to a nail salon, then that's a different story because a lot of nail salons, it's not... You know, a lot of nail salons don't have to be licensed. So anybody can just do your nails. And a lot of the times, everybody probably is not as sanitary as you. So what happened was my nails just began to get really, really fragile and thin. And I promise you, like we up close in person right now. I mean, it was bad. I have never had nails like this. First of all, because I bit my nails. When I stopped wearing the press on nails, I was like, it's time for me to do this myself now it's been probably a year but i was like let me just learn how to do my own nails and be more healthier um since i started doing things myself my nails have grown as you can see there's still like some damage here to the nail area just from getting those nails done all the time now mind you getting your nails done all the time we don't know what's in the acrylic they're using acid they're using acrylic they're using all of these things to make a piece of plastic stay on your nail for about two weeks so the uv lights all of the nail polish all of that stuff is going right into our bodies and we've been keeping up with the news and things like that so we see that the nail polishes and all of those different things are causing health issues but you know some people just want to ignore those things but it's true like you got a uv light on your body every single day that's not good that's a lot of radiation so i stopped doing the fake nails and I was still as you can see my cuticles look like they're done I don't cut them anymore I still like to you know have a clean look so what I'll do now is I use a nail filer and I use a different nail filer this is another thing use different tools for different body parts I use a different nail filer for my hands, a different nail filer for my feet. So this is still kind of new and I dispose them after about a month. It depends on how much I use them. I try to do my nails every two weeks. So it just depends. This one is all right for now, but it will be on the way in the garbage soon. What I like to do is I'll just take the filer across my cuticles and that'll just lay them flat if I still want that clean look. Also, I do have a different pair of clippers for my fingers and a different pair for my feet. So when I'm done filing it down, I'll probably go through and I still kind of pick the cuticle up a little bit with these and just clip it off. But I'm thinking about stopping that as well and literally just like shaving down the cuticle a little bit just with the filer. I'm getting out of the habit of cutting because, again, I want that protection. So I actually let them grow and I just cut these probably about a few days ago. Um, that's why they kind of look all right. And this one is already growing back. So when your body is doing what it's supposed to do and you're not interfering with that, things will happen fast. Like, uh, Lord forbid, but if you get cut, you're supposed to be able to heal instantly. Um, just like I just cut my cuticles, I want to say yesterday or the day before yesterday. And as you can see, this one is already coming back. Like you could tell I kind of like tried to clean them up, but this one is already growing back. The body is doing what the body is supposed to do. So now I'm saying, if you want to do your nails, we need to take a break from nails in general, period. So that way your, your fingernails can breathe, right? And so then another thing with them fake nails, you can't even wash your fingernails like that for real. All of that stuff get caked up in there. You know, it's not a lot of the times we, it just, it's just unsanitary to be honest with you. And you know, nobody want to think about that because we get a full set of nails, but it is unsanitary when you think about it. So it's better to just have your regular nails. Um, and you know, we, you know, we're learning. Um, so this is all I do for my nails. File it and clip them down. You can clip your nails however you clip yours. I just clip mine like an oval shape, <laughs> kind of like how my finger is going. Um, now, another thing is things like this. You like to pick on stuff like this, like, oh, the little skin. When your skin is peeling, I know I have a, a few vitamin deficiencies. That's another thing. When you're vitamin deficient in whatever it may be. Um, for me, it's the B vitamins, the vitamin A that is what happens as well your skin begins to peel and things like that because your skin shouldn't be peeling 
So instead of me being immature, like I like to play with this, like, oh, okay, because it make me feel like I got, I got something to do. I'll just, now I won't do this so much and then I'll just clip that off. Anytime you do like play with that little hangnail, you know what happened when eventually it fall off, you will see like a little hole right there. It's just other ways how to get infection in the body. So I'm done being childish and from now on, I just cut that off. Even when you get like the little skin ruffles down here, like my skin used to peel a lot down here. It's just a symptom of dry skin. So when you have really bad dry skin like I do, you know you're deficient in vitamins. It shouldn't be happening. Uh, just like all of this right here. Like you can see up close a person, like I have bad skin. I have really, really dry skin. So I can't afford to play with the fragrances and things like that. I literally have to like try my hardest to, you know, make sure I'm eating better and making sure that the things I'm putting on my skin does not contaminate me because you can, I mean, not the, not the, you know, you know, put no diagnosis or nothing out there. But when you begin to learn about yourself and you do that research, then I can diagnose myself, period. And what I know is it's a lot of vitamin deficiency. So that's showing out on the outside. So that means something ain't right on the inside. So I have to do something about that internal beauty. So this is regular nail polish. Um, I just got this, but I was telling you all that calcium strengthening nail polish. You can get that from Amazon. You can get that from the dollar store. The calcium strengthening nail polish is calcium. It's 100% calcium. Calcium is good for strong bones and strong nails. That is how I got my nails back. I promise you, I promise you. My nails began to come back because I use that calcium strengthened nail polish every single day. Now, I just ran out of that like a month ago and I just grabbed this because I just wanted a top coat. As you can see, I haven't even been using it like that. I have to go get me some more calcium nail polish. Get you some calcium strengthening nail polish to bring your nails back into strength. That, that's whether whatever. When we go and just get a manicure or pedicure, they just putting this on. Like we're not getting any benefits for real. Baby, next time you go in the nail shop, whip out that calcium nail polish. Then I'm like, mm, this different. You, you know, we get different things. We get benefits from the different things that we use. I'm a witness that that calcium nail polish really has some calcium in there because there's just no other way how my nails came back the way they did. And it's, it probably took me like two months because they were bad. I'm talking about my fingernails were wounded and everything was just so tender. That calcium brought me back, honey. And as you can see, look, we got a little shadow. You know what I'm saying? Hey, turn up. So... Let's take a break on getting the nails done and, you know, begin to wear your fingernails for a minute. Invest in you some calcium nail polish. It's like $2 and bring the natural nails back, honey. So I do have some soap here, some regular soap. And we got that ivory soap. I also have some apple cider vinegar. And then I have some beetroot apple cider vinegar black castor oil and grapeseed oil hand scrub now let's get into the meat and potatoes of why we're really here this is going to be your best friend this is a pumice stone okay this is made by nature so when a volcano erupts and the gas that comes out of the volcano and the smoke and all of the little particles and rocks that come out of the volcano when the volcano erupts, when it hits the water, it forms a stone, a very mild and light stone. So after a volcano erupts, whatever hit the water, this is what you get. You get a pumice stone. So all the little holes in here, that is the gas. So this literally was created by a volcano. How is this benefiting to us? because pumice is one of the number one gentle exfoliators in the world. I know everybody dropping a body scrub, honey. I can't wait to get on the way. I know we all have the different ways of exfoliating the skin, but we don't have to do that all the time. You can get you a $1.25 pumice stone, and I promise you, this right here is how you get the softest hands on earth. This is how you get the softest feet on earth. Baby, this is how you get the softest skin in general on earth. This is so gentle. You can use this on a child. 
when you think about it, children are very rough. And when you look at a child's hand, they'll probably be like five or six years old and they'll have calluses. You can use this on a child. Now, something I'm still in prayer about, but I'm just going to go ahead and say it because I'm confident like that. You know, like I said, do your send the research. I've been doing a little research on diabetics and the reason why the skin and the feet is so bad is due to the medicine that they're taking. The medicine is eating off on the flesh. Also, their vitamin deficiency in almost everything. And then they have calluses as well. So on a diabetic, those callus, when they're not removed, they turn into ulcers. And then that becomes a wound, that becomes a hole, and now it's affected. And now somebody probably got to get their foot amputated and all of those things that I feel like if they could have just stopped it where we're moving some callus, then it would have never turned to an ulcer or a wound or an open hole, Right. Um, you know, take this up with God, um, take this up with your doctor, take this up with your own extended research. It's something that I really want to do. Now, I don't know any diabetics, but it's something that I'm praying that I get to do in my lifetime because I want to test that to see if a diabetic, if you can heal a diabetic foot with the pumice, period. Now, when you do that, you have to understand that their feet is really dry and really cracked because they don't have any moisture. Uh, there's blood loss. There's no, you know, there's no good blood flow. So there's a lot going on. But I just feel like you can bring a diabetic's foot in their hands back before it even get bad like that with this stone because I feel like they just need maintenance like I understand that you're not able to cut on them and do different things like that and they're fragile but I really feel like a pumice stone would help a diabetic if they're able to just move in their skin out now you wouldn't do that dry you would add some soap now if we're talking about a diabetic then they would probably need you know uh, sterilized and high grade you know something that moisturizes so you can be able to use this as well but I say, I honestly believe that this will help a diabetic. I'm just leave that right there. We, we still in study. We still in study. But anyone can use a pumice stone to get the softest and most beautiful skin on earth. I say if you're using a stone, use different stones for different parts of the body. This is just for the hands, period. Just for the feet. You have to understand you're removing that dead skin. That skin is going to come off in here. So this is why we have that apple cider vinegar. So we can go ahead and the acid in the apple cider vinegar is going to kill that bacteria and remove that dead skin. So you can use this for a while. I say keep a pumice stone probably about no longer than three weeks. It really just depends on how much you use it. I say that because after you use it, it's getting dried out. It's sitting around in different environments and all of those different things. So it just depends on how you store it and how you use it. I have this little container now that I'll keep mine in, but I'm still going to say about three weeks top. This can be used for anyone, period. It comes from nature um, and it's one of the most gentle exfoliants ever. You don't want to use this dry. So what I like to do is wet my hands and I'll demonstrate here and use some soap. So I'm going to show you how to use this. Also, just like I said, going back to the diabetic, anytime you remove something, you have to replace it. You can't remove skin and then just be like, all right, I'm good to go. This is why we have dry skin or irritated skin or other things may be able to get into the body. So when you're removing that skin, you have to replace that. This is why the sugar scrubs are good because they remove the skin and then they also put back into your body that, you know, some oils are antibacterial and antifungus. So, you know, they're going to fight any type of um, air illness that tries to come into the skin after that skin is opened. Because when you detox your skin, your skin is left open for whatever in the air to, you know, attack your body. But that's why the sugar scrub is good because when you're removing that dead skin, those oils, that's antibacteria, they're coming in and they're adding that protection. So your skin is not dry. So that's why we have the sugar scrub. But besides all of this, besides all of this, this is the reason why we're here. I'm gonna show you how I clean my hands and my feet. We're just gonna do the hands, but I'm gonna demonstrate how to use this. And then I'm gonna show you how I use my um, hand scrub afterwards. And we're just gonna see a difference. Um, so this is what my skin currently looks like. It's really dry. 
um, up close and personal with the nails. We got some of the stone coming off. As you can see, like right here, you get calluses right here as well. Like that rough piece of skin right there, calluses just, they come everywhere. You can get them like right here. You can get them literally everywhere. The entire hand can be covered, right? So this is what I look like before we do the scrub. You'll even be able to see a difference in my skin. Even though it looked dry right now, it's going to look better. So this is what we look like. Ooh, we up close in person, honey. Got to get rid of that. And so now I'm going to set us up and we're just going to remove all of these rough areas that we see here. And we're going to have the softest hands on earth. The very first thing that you want to do is you need to make sure your hands are moist. That way you're not causing friction because it's already enough friction going on. This is why we get the calluses. So I like to use cold water. I always talk about cold water, but... I like to use cold water because it is a little bit more relaxing. Now, before you do this, another step before doing your hands, like I said, we're trying to take care of our bodies here. So you can soak your hands in some warm apple cider vinegar. Um, you can do like a pink Himalayan salt, an Epsom bath, a, a rose bath. You can soak your hands in olive oil and some water before you even do this. The reason why you soak is to loosen up the muscles in your hand. Like your hands been tight all day. You've been doing this at work all day, probably pulling something, lifting something. So you wanna relax those muscles in the body. So you can go ahead and do any type of um, like salt bath before you get started here. That way everything is rel relaxed. When everything is relaxed in your body, that's how you're able to absorb more as well. You can get more done as well. Another thing, if you do a soap before you use the pumice, then it also will soften up the calluses. That way you don't have too much work to do. So I, you know, did a bath probably like a few days ago. Um, but that's a good step to do beforehand. Now, just on a normal day, after I do the bath and I do the detoxes, because I do like an in-depth cleaning probably like once every week or every two weeks. And then after that, I just use this every day. Um, so this is just like my everyday clean, but I'm just gonna make sure my hands is wet, make sure the pumice is wet. And I'm gonna go in with this soap. We're going in with our ivory soap cause I like the way it lavens. Make sure whatever you use is something that you use. Ivory works really, really good for me on my sensitive skin. And just make sure you got like a good coating. Because like I said, you don't want to add any friction. You want this to be removed the best way as possible. You can even throw a little bit of oil on here if you want to and remove it like that. Now, what I like to do is, I'll turn the water off. I like to flat hand it. And I just do the palm. Mind you, you get, I'm, baby, I'm talking about everything. I like to do up here on my wrist. I won't do too much, but I do up here. You like to do everything. So, and it's so gentle. I like to go in circular motion because circular motion, when you have different wounds and stuff like that, and if you're just doing something hard, you can add more more damage than good. So circular motion always work good because it allows things to come off in a rotation format, not just, okay, everything is going up. When you're doing a circular motion, then everything is going everywhere. So you're just gonna go, I'm talking about every part of the hand, nothing gets missed. Just circular motion off the corners of the hand, off the sides. You can put a little elbow grease in it if you want to. I don't need to, but if you need to, you can. And make sure that it stays a little moist. Remember, everything, I'm talking about thumb, size of thumb, even the top. I like to do that too. Sometimes I don't cut the cuticle and now I just take the pumice across there. I'm talking about I'm baked smooth. Watch this. Make sure that you flatten your hand out to bring it, you know, bring whatever callus is up. You're getting all of the knuckles and everything. And you're gonna do this to your liking, right? You're gonna do that until, back they already soft. You're gonna do that until the softness of your liking. I say keep going until them things baby soft, <laughs> for real. But if you're doing it every day, then you don't have to worry about, you know, 
trying to catch up for one day. But if you're just starting, I'll say, you know, let your body get used to something new happening. So don't be all rough. Just do it for the one day, then come back and do it tomorrow, and then just begin to do it. Now, after you clean your whole hand, I'll say up to the from the wrist down, period. After you do that, like I said, you're going circular motion. Now you have to go in. I'm talking about everywhere, the skin. You got to get the skin, and it's that soft. The top of the hand. Now, mind you, you got in between your fingers too, and then you got around your fingers as well, and you got the tops and the backs. So what I like to do is make sure it's moist, and you're going to file your hand like you will file a fingernail. You got to get the side. You get the inside. Don't forget the top. Get the top of your nail. Make sure you get the top of your finger and you get the back of your finger. You're literally filing your entire hand. Do your circular motion in between your fingers. So you can go ahead and just take it like this. I'm talking about everybody gets done. So I'm just give y'all a moment of silence <laughs> and I'm just going ahead and clean the hand so you can see. And that was pretty much the demonstration. So let's start over. Let's see what we got so far. Jesus. 